Wow. Um, very excited to be uh, here at the, in Kenosha at the museum to uh, take a look and walk through the Transparent Watercolor Society of America show that uh, myself and Lori Goldstein Warren juried. And these are the paintings that we selected. Um, and we're going to walk through it and uh, talk about some of these paintings and uh, just really um, kind of enjoy the art one more time. Uh, get to see it up close and in person right now. Um, I'll start with this one right here. Uh, Nora Stevens, uh, uh, the Nora Stevens Founders Award was given to uh, Lana Cease. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And uh, this is a uh, really uh, fun painting to me. It expresses uh, something really unusual. I mean, how often do you see somebody underwater? Um, and there's this uh, sort of a surreal uh, aspect to it. So it, had a, it really grabbed my attention from that standpoint. And I love the, the, uh, the format, the tall, a uh, little bit more vertical format uh, versus a horizontal or a square. And there's this uh, kind of closing in um, that, that you get that feeling of there. And there's this um, wonderful use of color, uh, these beautiful uh, blues uh, juxtaposed against these warms that are reflecting in her skin. Uh, there's something about it that uh, really is intriguing and uh, I think draws you in. One of the things I really like to see <clears throat> in uh, paintings is how did the artist, what did the artist use to draw you into the painting? What are the, what are the is it the subject matter? Is it the compositional elements? Uh, what is it that brings you in? And I think that one uh, is really a fascinating painting. About, um, about Ken Call. Um, uh, if, if you are around at all, you'll have seen Ken Call's paintings, and, um, and I paint uh, figures and portraits and things, and I, I just really admire Ken's work a lot. This is the, uh, he got a, a, an award of merit for this, and uh, something about the way he uh, creates these beautiful textures. And, and you know, even looking at the, this, this area down in here, these are just beautiful watercolor uh, effects that he gets. Uh, compositionally, it's very interesting. The person's looking off the, off the page. There's this sort of uh, glow about her. Uh, she's really a, an interesting subject. His uh, use of color and his use of textures is just amazing. Uh, always, always enjoyable. Let's talk about um, Lana's painting. This was the, uh, got the Edgar Whitney Memorial Award, which is a, a one of the top awards. And um, Lana's painting uh, is intriguing from many different aspects. The composition is, is I, I love it. I love the way your eye is led into the painting here and you've got this sort of passage. You, you just, you just want to keep looking at it because your eye keeps going around. And if you look at the details in here, the, the gold, this is a, not, it's not gold paint, obviously. This is the Transparent Watercolor Society, after all. But this uh, use of these colors to create this effect of gold, brighter reflection in the shadows, darker in the light. So you have that 
feeling when you step back that it really is reflecting light. That's a great uh, technique. Her, her uh, nice uh, treatment of the value range through the shadow area of the T and into the golden color of it is perfect. I mean, it's just like, a, like you could really drink it. <laughs> The, you know, little bubbles up here. So when you get down to uh, photorealism kind of things, and we have a lot of that in this show, um, it's, uh, there's a lot of different things you can look at, but uh, for some reason she carried off a, a very, uh, a lot of really complicated uh, things in a very simple way, not overworking, and uh, not a lot of heavy paint to paint, um, you know, to kind of get to that point of, of the, of the darkness of some of the photorealism things. Very bright, and, uh, and I, I really like it a lot. Okay, um, so we've, we've, you know, those others that we looked at, a couple of them were uh, more on the photorealistic side. Um, the one thing I love about the contemporary watercolor shows and the way uh, watercolor is being um, handled by artists and the way we, uh, when you get to a show like this, you have, uh, the, you know, totally non-objective abstract paintings. Uh, you have very expressionistic, impressionistic paintings. You have uh, traditional style paintings and you have sort of some things that are very modern uh, in their approach. Um, a painting like this by Jerry Smith, uh, what, a, what a beautiful little traditional watercolor. I mean, that looks like that could have been done uh, any time in the last 200 years. I mean, it's a traditional style. It's very fresh. It's very well painted. His colors are great. You can just see that he's got a lot of, um, he, he has a lot of control, but he has a lot of freedom and looseness. There's this something about a little painting, and that's little, it's, it's still about a half sheet. So it's, it's a painting that really carries well. Uh, colors are harmonious. It's, a, it's just a beautiful painting. There's not much you can say about it that, that uh, beyond that, it, it just carries well. And it's, uh, again, that sort of the traditional watercolor, you know? Okay, hi, I'm Lori Goldstein Warren. Um, Michael Holter and I judged the Transparent Watercolor Society of America show this year. Uh, you're going to find out there's a lot of great paintings here. If you're nearby, come see the show. And we're going to start with my one of my favorites, which is right over here. <laughs> this one by Caitlin Laleen Hatch. I don't know if I'm saying her middle name right, but um, this one it caught me as soon as I came through the door. It is a very simple subject, but she has all everything going for it. It's got hard edges, soft edges, blooms to create all this interest in the in the neck and in the mane. I mean, and I'm a horse person anyway. I love horses, but this is a it's a really beautiful rendition of a horse. I mean, how the ear just disappears into the background with that soft edge. I mean, it's great control and edges are very important, so. Frank Graff won the Frank Webb Award of Merit. This is his piece right here. I love, I'm very much, I started out being a colorist then I became a value painter, and now I'm all about textures. And he does a beautiful job here of textures. He's got you know, the, all the dark colors, the drips, and he takes something very simple like just a white farmhouse and turns it into a, a piece of art. And I love the, the horizontal or the horizon line. It's very high. He's, he did the thirds, which you have to do, but just beautiful colors. Nice and simple, limited palette, but powerful.
So um, this, uh, this painting called Big Feet uh, won an award of merit, and um, the, uh, the thing I like about this particular painting, not only is it, is it painted well and the, and the treatment uh, done well, it, it's a very interesting uh, painting from, the, from a lot of different perspectives. One of them is perspective. <laughs> I, uh, well, I, you know, the, my students know that I'm, I'm, I talk about perspective and, and, and we try to create that depth and that in, interest in a painting, get you into the painting. And what happened with the way she has painted this is this, this shoe you know, almost feels like it's coming off the page toward you. And I just think that's a, so intriguing uh, and a lot of that has to do with just the way it was probably photographed or the way she saw it when she was painting it. But it's a, the, the textures are really great. The little uh, things that she's done that are s almost you know, photorealistic, but then there's this sort of abstractness to it as well because it's got uh, so many different things, uh, color and, and, and uh, textures that really bring you into it. I, I just think it's a fun painting. So there's, I guess the point of a lot of this uh, discussion is that there are so many different ways to to uh, paint watercolor. There's so many different um, options to express yourself and to um, get a, a painting uh, into a good show and to, and to find uh, uh, your way to an award. There's, there, there's no one way to do it. And, uh, uh, and, and there, there's just a, a wonderful variety in a show like this. It's a lot of fun to, to have judged it and uh, been a part of this show. This one is Bev Josiak. She's um, an artist from out west, a good friend of mine. Um, not why she got in, but I do know her work. <laughs> and as you can see, um, this is why it gets in. She is a master of textures. She um, does these beautiful, they, they look almost like they could be acrylic because the colors are so vibrant. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. And it's emotional. You don't know, is this Ballerina, is she just going over her dance in her head before she goes on stage? Is she upset about something? Did she, maybe she fall off her toe shoes? Who knows what happened, but it's a really nice emotional piece, which Bev is very good at. Peter's um, painting, uh, like a lot of his stuff, is th this combination of, of um, something you can, you can grab onto that's, that's representational, which I like to see in my paintings. You know, you've got this machinery here, and it's this extreme uh, view of, of this piece of machinery, and I don't know how much of it's fiction or how much of it he, uh, he used photography to capture it from a weird angle. <laughs> But um, you have all that going on, and if you just if you just painted it, even with the composition there, and painted it very very straightforward, it would still be interesting. But because he goes into this textural thing and puts these layers of texture into everything, uh, even these areas that would be a rusty area perhaps have such depth to them and such uh, variety of color and, and texture. I mean, I just think he works it to a degree that most people wouldn't and it's a it's a it's a uh, it's a tribute to his dedication to this type of the style of painting and what he's doing with it it's it's a pretty remarkable painting the colors the the feeling you get uh the perspective everything about it really holds well together <clears throat> So 
Susan Stuller, she achieved her master status this year, which is just as good or better than an award. So she's entered, um, she's been in 10 times in the show. Um, this one I love because the this is a great uh, repetition of shapes. I mean, all the balloons and the repeating, and it just makes this a very strong piece just because of sheer repetition. You got the bubbles and you got, it's just round, round, round. Everything's round, very hard to pull off. It could, it could end up being very boring, but she pulls it off in this piece and she loves doing the bubbles. She does a lot of those. All right, um, this piece is by Elisa Shea. Uh, she's a signature member here at TWSA. She won the Kenneth R. Hetzel Memorial Award. Um, this just, when people tell me, I don't know what to paint. I don't go to cities. I don't have people that are willing to pose for me and all that kind of thing. Here's a good example, paint anything, just paint. This piece is gorgeous. I would hang this in my house. But I mean, the detail that she achieves, the, and I'm not a pho photorealistic painter at all, but she is, and this is, it's an amazing, even the shadow under the nail. So don't say you don't have anything to paint. If you got stuff in your house, you got something to paint. And it might even be in a TWSA show. <laughs> okay, this is Thomas Rebeck from Florida. Title is Let's Play. Now, to, when I first looked at this, again, when I first came in the door, it catches your eye. It's very colorful. And again, you get this repetition of shapes, round, 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 and um, even the tops of the bottles. But what's genius about this one is these black and white and gray bottles behind. That is what sets these colors and makes them pop. But I, I just love this piece. I think it's a lot of fun. Really good work. Steed Mitchell's entry. He won the Rosie McAfee Memorial Award. And it's like the cypress trees in the swamp. He is a genius at neutrals. That's all I can say. If you don't believe me, come up and look close. He can get more grays than any human being I know. But he's a distinguished master, and this is one of my favorites I've ever seen of his, actually. I, lo I love his, um, his desolate prairie landscapes, but I love this one, the light coming down through the water. It's just gorgeous. Okay, now we're going that way, sorry. Um. <clears throat> David Stickle uh, on this one here is it, this is again one of those that it's, it's sort of a photorealistic uh, painting, <clears throat> extreme details in some of these areas. But what I really admire about this this one is you have to, again I like seeing depth <clears throat> and those students that I have you know we're talking about perspective and aerial perspective and things that that help you to create depth. Well, this one <clears throat> is de creating depth through. Um, you know, this is the, the glass with these uh, words on it on this window. And then you have the things inside the window. And then you have the reflection of things on the other side of the street going on. He, I think he does a lot of these kind of things, if I'm not mistaken. And it's really got these wonderful um, things going on throughout it. You got, you know, sort of uh, 
uh, modern art things. You got these old Turkish uh, 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 lamps or whatever those things are. <laughs> yeah, it's a really cool combination of, 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 of things happening there. And then you have this very simple and clean uh, landscape or, or cityscape, these buildings on this side over here. That's a really fascinating painting when you get down to it. Contrasting the photorealism that we have in this show um, is, is a very, very fresh and, and uh, uh, painterly, if you want to use that term, uh, approach to a very simple subject. Uh, uh, looks like a workbench with a bunch of paint cans. You get a, a roller and a paintbrush. A lot of open negative space, white paper showing through, very rich colors, um, simple composition, and simple uh, drawing. And uh, just the use of the colors, uh, there's, a, there's an emotion in all that that's really, really fun. And uh, it just stands out in a, in a show like this is something that, that is uh, so, um, sort, sort of so spontaneous, but you know it's not just spontaneous. There's a, there's a plan here, and it was well executed. Um, it's, a, it's an excellent painting. This one, Stephen Kuhlman, and it's called uh, 15 Pains. And again, I'm into textures right now. So this one, when I was going through and judging, this caught my eye immediately. It's, it's just a genius um, approach to textures. He did everything right, including not repeating these all the way. He broke up some here and here, <coughs> excuse me, and here, but um, yeah. I just love it. He's, and, he, there's, and there's a trick to rust, if anybody doesn't know that, and he knows it. If you're going to do rust, do blue. Get some blue in there. It makes your rust pop. But I love it. My last one is here, and this is the first time? First. First, first from, from Mexico. And this is uh, Patricia Guzman, and uh, she got the Phil Austin Founders Award, and this was called Purification Two. Master of Portraits, that's all I can say. The shadow, again, the texture. She builds a lot of texture into her portraits. And the eyes are just incredible. But this is what she does. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> this is John Salmonen, Master of the Urban Landscape. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say about his work either. Him and Dean just blow me away, but um, his use of color to draw you around his, um, his uh, compositions, 
because he puts warms and grays very strategically. So your eye is constantly, <clears throat> excuse me, I had something in my throat. Your eye is constantly moving around the page looking for those warms. And it's just a master landscape as always. Here you go, you talk more. <laughs> <laughs> um, John's, John's paintings are always intriguing. Uh, he's been painting for many, many years and he's has, he has he's, has some other styles that he used to do, and, and uh, but he's doing this now uh, in in, uh, in a, such a bold way. I think one of the things that really attracted me to it, not only um, it, it, all the things that Laurie mentioned, the the color, the the, the combination of colors, uh, the depth. There's depth back in the back there where you have these cools going back into the far reaches of this uh, street area. Uh, and, and there's all those things going, but another thing about it, when you get to see it in person uh, as, a, as a juror, it's, it's really large. It's, a, it's, a, it's larger than a full sheet. It's, it's a, a, big, a big painting that uh, takes a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, control in a way to make everything in it work. Uh, and so sometimes in a, in a show, uh, you, you get to see them in person and, it's, and size is pretty impressive so it is an impressive painting from that standpoint and the detail um, just you know um, area one area after another it makes you want to keep looking at it it's not something that you can just kind of glance at and walk past uh, it, it's a very very strong painting colors are, are phenomenal um, and he uses these great uh, great areas of dark to really accent these lights the light areas and even the actual lights, the lights almost look like they're, they're, uh, they're, they are on <laughs> and uh, uh, emitting light. So uh, overall, it's just a, a really, really uh, remarkable painting. I like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is Michael's, Michael Holter, if you haven't met him yet, um, Ode to Oxide. This again, it's the vanished edges that make this painting. I mean, I just, I saw this on Facebook quite a while ago and I loved it. And again, he's got the rust with the blues, which makes the rust pop, just like I told you on the other one. <coughs> and um, I love that he didn't get too detailed with the treads and everything. He just, he leaves something to the viewer's imagination, which I really like. And now you can talk about my totally hard edge painting. <laughs> there you go. Let me, let me jump over here. Um, just, so I can talk with my hands. Yeah. Oh, this is incredible. You know, um, such a such a beautiful range of values uh, from the really dark to the pure white, all the way through, and the, the you know just the stages of of the way she created this piece, and then of course bringing you right into the eyes <clears throat> with those blues. <clears throat> it just sort of sets it all off. Man, my voice is going to. I know, see. <clears throat> <clears throat> but, uh, you know, beautiful, beautiful use of, 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 of textures and, and little, um, just small things. And, and, and the stages of, of value leading you in, giving sh shape to, the, to this form, these, these round forms. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful job, a beautiful treatment. Very dramatic drama. Your drama. Yeah, you gotta have drama. Drama. That's very, very nice. <laughs> I love this. This is great. I love the, uh, the textures. The atomizers. I love the, uh, the, the, these figures. They're, they're not overly you know, painted. Not with too much attention because they're small. You, mm -hmm. you know, you can overdo small things like that and get to mm -hmm. start getting into making the face rounded the way, you know. I mean, it's just sort of posterized. It's very, very, very fun. Very nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where to keep this going all day? This is Julie Skoda, who is now, I guess, is now she with President Emeritus? All right, so she's happily finished with her role as president for a little while. <laughs> um, this is cute, it's called The Conversation. 
obviously. It reminds me a little bit of, I have a grandson who has curly blonde hair like that, who had a dog that he loved very much. So it's a nice emotional piece. Um, good color combinations. The only critique I would have, don't get mad at me, Julie, when you watch this, I would bring a little of this dark into the dog somewhere of his shirt. Just kind of join them together a little closer. <laughs> but otherwise, I really like it. It's very cute.